President, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much. And um, I'm, uh, let me start by saying that I'm very happy to be back in a busy press room to present this package. So that's good to see all of you. And I'm delighted to be joined by part of the team who made this package possible. And at the very beginning, many, many thanks and my respect to Franz as the first executive vice president who is leading the Green Cluster and to you, the commissioners, uh, of what you achieved from Janusz to Adina, Paolo, Kadri, Virginius. Thank you very much. This was an enormous effort, but the result speaks for itself. Um, this group here does uh, represent not only the, I think, outstanding knowledge and the excellent teamwork within the Commission, but it also reflects the whole of government approach or the whole of society, whole of economy approach. And this was the message almost exactly two years ago to the day, it was the 16th of July, um, when I put on the table my political guidelines and in there the core part was the European Green Deal. The overarching goal was, and of course is, to make Europe the very first climate neutral continent in the world and to build a new growth strategy to get there. Um, I remember not everyone agreed at that time and there were very vivid uh, debates, but now two years on, we have come a long way. We now have a shared sense of purpose. We have a shared sense of direction. We know where we want to go and what we need to do to get there. We know, for example, that our current fossil fuel economy has reached its limits. And we know that we have to move on to a new model, one that is powered by innovation, that has clean energy, that is moving towards a circular economy. And this is why we set out to make the climate goal not only a political aspiration, but also a legal obligation. And thanks to our new European climate law, this is exactly what we now have in place. Two years ago, we also set out our vision about that transformation. And today, I'm proud to say that we have made good on our commitments. Europe is now the very first continent that presents a comprehensive architecture to meet our climate ambitions. We have the goal, but now we present the roadmap to how we are going to get there. Our package aims to combine the reduction of emissions with measures to preserve nature and to put jobs and social balance at the heart of this transformation. And it also shows the value that this transformation will generate and how public and private investment can and will, of course, work together to make it a reality. We should always keep in mind roughly one-third of next generation EU and the European budget will support green projects, sustainable projects all over Europe. This is more than 500 billion euros at the European level alone. Then you have to add the national provisions in the national budgets. And this all gives, and we feel it already, we see it, certainty and incentives to the private sector so that they complement that, for example, through investing in green bonds that are making our financial system more sustainable. So today it is about putting all of that together in an architecture that can drive us to where we want to go. We have the goals, we have the climate law, we have it all underpinned by investment, and now today it's about the roadmap. The roadmap to our new target of at least minus 55% of greenhouse gas emissions till 2030. We chose carbon pricing as a clear guiding and market-based instrument with a social compensation. And the principle is simple. Emission of CO2 must have a price. A price on CO2 that incentivizes consumer, producers, and innovators to choose the clean technologies, to go towards the clean and sustainable products. 
and we know that carbon pricing works. Our existing emission trading system has already helped significantly to reduce emissions in industry and in power generation. So we will strengthen the existing system in these sectors and we will make emission trading system applicable to aviation and extend it to the maritime. We need this because we just have to consider that one single cruise ship, cruise ship alone uses as much CO2 per day, like 80,000 cars. And then we will build a second ETS, a second ETS on buildings and road transport. Because we all know that buildings today consume 40% of the energy consumption and the road transport emissions have continuously increased, not decreased, but increased. And we must reverse this trend. We must reverse this trend and we must do it in a fair and in a social way. And let me step back for a moment from the specific example. If you look at transformations in Europe, every transformation we were successful when we combined market-driven measures with the right social balance. And this is at the core of our social market economy. Therefore, we call it a social market economy. And in this spirit, the climate transition will be accompanied by a social climate fund. This fund will support income and it will support investments to tackle energy poverty and to cut bills for vulnerable households and small businesses. So this is real support for those that need it most while the pricing is effective. And this is real solidarity between member states and within member states. We are presenting today um, the market-based tools and tangible investment complemented and underpinned by a comprehensive regulatory framework. And I will ask my team in a moment to present the proposals to you, but allow me a few final thoughts. Europe has always been the continent of scientists and innovators. And we cannot always compete with the sheer size of our competitors, or for example, the amount of natural resources they have. But we can rely on the most precious renewable re resource in the world, and this is our ideas, our ingenuity, our innovative power of our people. It is this spirit that should give us the confidence that this generational change is not only realistic, but also optimistic. We very often talk about taking our destiny in our own hands. This package, this transition, is the true meaning of that. The more inclusive, the more successful it is today, the more we will have the freedom to act tomorrow in the future. And over the next days, you will hear a lot more details about the proposals and the percentages, the acronyms, the allocation fees that go with them. These details do matter. But so does the bigger picture. Change on this scale is never easy, even when it's necessary. And for that reason, there are some who will say we should go slower, we should go lower, we should do less. But when it comes to climate change, doing less or doing nothing literally means changing everything. The infernos and hurricanes we have seen over the last few weeks are only a very small window into what our future could look like. But by acting now, when we still have the policy choices, we can do things another way. We can build for our future by design and choose a better, a healthier, and a more pro prosperous way for the future. I'm deeply convinced and my team is deeply convinced that this is our generational task and it must unite us, it must encourage us because this is about securing the well-being not only of our generation but also of our children 
and of our grandchildren. And I think there is no greater and no more noble task than that, and Europe is ready to lead the way. Now I would like to give the floor to the first executive vice president, Franz Timmermans, who is in charge of the overall green cluster and the European Green Deal. Franz, please. Thank you very much, President. And let me start by thanking you, all my colleagues here present and the, the ones who are not here, and especially the Commission staff, for an incredible effort over the last couple of months. This is really epic, what our colleagues were able to offer us in terms of quality, in terms of depth, in terms of analysis. So I believe we now have a package that can take us to our goal, which is now a legal uh, obligation of reducing our emissions with at least 55% by 2030, which will set us on a path of climate neutrality by 2050. As the President has said, um, there is no time to waste. Um, people are dying in northwest Canada because it's 50 degrees Celsius there. Northwest Canada. Siberia reaches uh, temperatures over 35 degrees. Um, Central Europe is over 40 degrees. We saw tornadoes in the Czech Republic. Who would ever have thought of that? So anyone who wants to deny the urgency of the climate crisis should look again. And we certainly don't have the luxury of denying it. And as the President said, sometimes people say, whoa, take it easy. Not that much. It's difficult. It's hard. Yes, it is difficult. Yes, it is hard. But it's also an obligation because if we would renounce our obligation to help humanity live within planetary boundaries, we would fail not just ourselves, but we would fail our children and our grandchildren, who, in my view, if we don't fix this, will be fighting wars over water and food. So that is, in my view, the background of our efforts. But these efforts are very concrete. They have to do two things at the same time. Put a price on carbon and put a premium on decarbonizing. That is, in fact, what we're doing. We're putting a price on carbon so that people have the incentive to use less carbon, and we put a premium on decarbonizing so that we stimulate innovation, adaptation, we stimulate the bringing to the market of new technologies, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that will take us uh, to where uh, we need uh, to be. You know, there is the famous quote... Um, in, in Hamlet, um, time is out of joint, oh, cursed spite, that ever I was born to set it right. That's it. Time is out of joint because humanity no longer lives within planetary boundaries. We were born to contribute to set it right. That is to help humanity learn to live within planetary boundaries. If we get to minus 55 in 2030 and uh, climate neutrality in 2050, humanity has a fighting chance because the rest of the world is watching us, is following us, and is really looking towards us for the best examples to get us there. Thank you, President.